for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hello, I'm Joan Quinn and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled are artist Sean Cheatham and actress Louise Davis. Artist Sean Cheatham shows his works at the Catherine Cohn Gallery in Culver City. He uses the human body as a source of imagination. They're classic but edgy, direct and academic with some dark humor. And I'll show you some of those, photo those I'll show you photographs of some of those paintings. Um, he's a skilled draftsman, but he speaks with this new kind of technique. I don't know what he does. You're gonna be so surprised when you see his work. Sean was born and raised in California. He earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the uh, College of Design in Pasadena. And you teach there too, is that right? Yes, I do. And what do you teach? I teach uh, portrait painting. <laughs> you teach portrait painting? Of course, yes. And what do you, how do you teach? What do you tell them? Um, I start with the basics, with drawing, foundation, um, and then just jump right into color mixing and palette organization. Do you use models? Yeah, models every time. D when did you decide you wanted to be an artist yourself? After I got over the idea of being a cowboy or a firefighter, I thought <laughs> I'll just follow <laughs> what I know. And How old was that? Ten years old? <laughs> uh, yeah, but up in, even up until community college, I, I thought maybe I could still be a, not a cowboy, but maybe a firefighter. Why, why did art come into your life? I was born with the skills and it runs in the family. My uh, grandfather on my mom's side was a painter, sculptor, my uh -huh. whole, that whole side of the family, a lot of amazing artists there. So when, when art actually found you, what, what was it? How did you know when the turning point was? It was really early. I don't, I don't even know if there was a turning point necessarily. Um, like I said, my mom's family, she's Chinese and a lot of the family would be moving to America and it was sort of the only way to communicate with them in some way. We draw together, and, and Is that so right? yeah, so it was always very supported and and. But actual pictures or yeah. symbols? Or? I would I love to draw cowboys, <laughs> motorcycles, um, you know, all the kind of things that kids like. Do you have to have this special insight to be a portrait painter? I don't. That's a hard question for me to answer because I don't know if I you know I just do it. It's you like just I don't, do it. Yeah, I know. That's the part I can't teach. You know, I can because I don't, I don't know, I didn't learn it, I just had it. What, what do you think a portrait painter needs most? What, are, what do you have to concentrate? I think technical skill. Really? Yeah, and it, it, for traditional portraiture, definitely. You started out, I think, when we were talking earlier, um, to be a draftsman, to, to, to do that kind of work. What yeah. did that in, entail? Uh, I've always just really been into rendering and, and I think as a child I'm I think when you're thinking about art you're always drawn to things that look like photographs and, and it looks real and that's what what kids know most I think as you start to learn about it of course when you're really young you have no idea you just but not so interpretive yeah exactly we um, I'm I'm really impressed with this it looks like a photograph this Thank the you. portrait that you did yep. you started Let's talk about the process. I came over to Ka uh, Katie Cohn's. I keep calling her Katie because yeah. she's Catherine. I came over to Katie Cohn's gallery and you took some photographs. Yes. So you set up lights. Set up lights, just one. Used a little bit of the natural light coming in. And then I took maybe 200 photographs. <laughs> you took a lot. Really quickly, yeah. Indoors, outdoors. And then I went home and, oh. and, then, and then I um, really narrowed it down to about 50. How long possible. does that take? Do you go it, through it them really quickly? It took me a few days. It took, sometimes, I mean, there's many that I go through because they're either blurry or you're oh. making an expression where you're laughing or something that's a little more just a, a snapshot of a moment. Um, 
So yeah, it took a few days of just narrowing it down to like maybe 10. Mm -hmm. and then I actually showed some to Katie to, to kind of talk about what she thought because I didn't feel like I knew you well enough at that time to, to know exactly which one would work. And, so and for a commission, it. would you go through the same process? Yeah, definitely. Okay, I always so make sure that I'm taking the photos and I want to meet the person so that I get to know them a little bit and, uh -huh. and kind of know their, their personality and their soul. And then after you conversed with Katie, then what kind of materials did you have to, what, what's next? Next was, uh, I did some sketches, did like three oh, or four did. drawings. Drawing? Yeah, just quick ones to kind of get familiar with your face and, and just sort of the different ones I was considering. And then um, narrowed it down to this one, did a tight drawing, and then... What kind of drawing? With pencil? With pencil. Just Color pencils? Or no, not? just regular, I think I was just using a regular number two yellow pencil <laughs> on printer paper. Yes. That's my favorite combination And, then, and you drawing. drew pretty much what you were going to have on this? Yeah, I <laughs> went a little looser because I was trying a few different ones, so I wanted to see what was working for each one. And then when I did, for this one, I did do a tighter drawing, that un but it's underneath the painting. I did it on the, on the panel. It, the okay, paper. so what is it painted on then? It's actually on watercolor paper, really heavy watercolor paper that I prepared. And how did you prepare it? I used just acrylic mediums, gesso, and then I used this modeling paste on there. To how do you decide it. what size? Because you, your work is in all different sizes. Yeah, it really varies. Um, I knew with a lot of portraits, just with a head and shoulders, I like to do these little ones because I find them to be intimate and that people are really drawn into like they want to get close to them. So I do that a lot. When it's a full figure, I'll go bigger. But It looks like it's been painted and, and put in the garage yeah. and distressed and so real. Do you, do you think about those things? There's a little bit. A lot of that has to do with the edges because of the way I prepare the paper. and Or even with wood or canvas, I do the same process. You, and use, so all diff you use different uh, colors yeah, to paint Yeah, Yeah, but I prepare it the same way no matter what it is. And it, it always ends up, because I'm applying things with palette knives, it ends up a little more like crusty oh, in so the you edges. Use, so. Okay, let's talk about what you use. You use brushes? Yeah. Um, well, for the preparation, I use a big, wide spackle knife. It's like patching holes in the walls, and I just <laughs> take this could stuff you do? on. Yeah. <laughs> Give a facelift. <laughs> I could try. Spackle these, <laughs> yeah. spackle these things, and that's what you do. And yeah, then do you use a brush? And then I did the drawing with again with just a regular pencil, and then and then straight into paint with brush. Yeah. Do you listen to music when you're working? I, I always listen to music. There was a period where I wouldn't listen to music and just go with complete silence. Maybe that was when. There was no iTunes, and you just had to put the CD in, and then when it ran out, sometimes I would paint <laughs> for be, hours. Yeah, and it'd be quiet yeah, then. <laughs> yeah, because once I'm in it, I can't stop. But now it's just with iTunes. There's always music playing. You know, they say about portraiture that you all, the artist always puts a piece of himself in it. Do yeah. you feel like you're doing that somehow? I don't feel that with my work, and I, as a teacher, I notice that it's usually not just a piece. The the paintings look like the painter usually. I know. I that's why I was I thinking. I, I have a piece done by Al Rupersberg, mm -hmm. and it's his nose. Yeah. It's not my nose at all. I may do that sometimes, but I don't. I don't know if that's something I'm because I know used to doing. it's your hand involved. Yeah. I mean, it, it's part of you going into it. But oh yeah, definitely a physical part. There, yeah, I don't do the physical part. When you had a show at Katie's and you showed different pictures, I'm going to show some of these now, and we'll talk about them. What kind of a collector buys a picture of another person? Usually somebody who appreciates the painting aspect of it, I think, for the most part. That seems to be my biggest collector. People, maybe people who actually even dabble in paint themselves, so they like the, the technical part of it. Do you um, paint other subjects other than just people? Uh, sometimes it's landscapes, still lives. You do? Um, Moose, skinned moose. I'm gonna sh oh, skinned moose. He wants to show the skinned moose. We start, okay. just get it out of the Here's way. Where's the skinned moose? Let's talk about it. Where did you see this? Um, I went on a trip to Sweden, as I do once in a while with my family, my wife and son, and um, we happened to be there for the start of hunting season, and that was the first kill of the season, and I had never seen anything like that, and watched them slaughter it, and well, the kill had happened, but the skinning and the breaking it down and then later we were going to eat some moose. Did you take photographs? I took tons of photographs. I was just so intrigued. At first, I was and a little horrified. And then did you paint it? This yeah. is a painting. Yeah, yeah, that's the painting, and, and it's how really big large. Is it? uh, Forty by sixty. 
40 by 60. It's, it's very bigger, yeah. as big as the moose. Not quite. The moose was huge. It's about the the painting almost looks like a pig because it's about that size. That's what I that's yeah. what I was thinking. This one I love. Thank you. I love this. That Tell happened to this. be sitting in a classroom one day. I don't know. Somebody distorted the skull, and I had done something in the past with a jawbone um, because I have TMJ. I kind of have explored the subject a little bit of uh -huh. the jawbone and uh, I just liked how it looked sitting there in classroom so I took took some sick pictures and tried it out and then it pointed back to my TMJ. And this? That is, uh, she's actually a model from the schools that I work at and I always knew I wanted to paint her because she had this really Victorian look, um, very classical subject for painting. Of course, all the Dutch painted people. Yep. If you buy Dutch paintings, you, yeah. you're buying people. Yes, Rembrandt. I, Rembrandt's one of my favorites, for sure. That one actually kind of went almost in a Klimt direction, in a, too. Very yeah. much, yes. I was, who are your, your inspirations? Who are the painters that you think about? And Mainly, I would say Rembrandt for a lot of things, technically speaking. Um, Klimt is great. You know, there's so many. John Singer Sargent, of course, is a portrait painter. Fantastic. One of my favorites. And then a few of the other guys from that time, like <laughs> Zorn from Sweden. When you do a, a, a show, like, say, with Katie Cohn, does she come to your gallery and pick out something, or does she tell you to paint a certain series, or how do you she go about that? She did not. We, um, I just started doing paintings here and there, and I just paint what I feel like and hope it all comes together, and then it sort of did in the end, and she gives a little bit of direction maybe, or says she likes this or that, or, um, but for the most part, she just let me do what I want, which I think is the best way to get the best work out of me. This is... Um very old old world. Yes. Every time I paint myself with a hood, whether it's up or down, I either look l religious or even like Jesus or a, or a brother of some sort. Brother, it looks yeah, like, yeah. Know. Although it looks kind of satanic, too. Maybe it's just the black eye. <laughs> How darkness. long does it take you to paint something like this? Um, I'd say like two to three good sittings. And you Long sit for yourself. Do you look in the mirror? I used to do that. I don't do it anymore because I can't sit still. So I just go for the photographs for myself too and spend time manipulating it in Photoshop and then just put it up on my computer screen and paint from that. But actually, do you paint on an easel? What do you actually use? Yeah, I have a regular easel with a crank that sits in my studio and, and right next to it is uh, my computer. So it's almost like I'm, I set it up like I'm painting from life. So I have my palette the easel oh. and the painting, and I can kind of just look without too much movement. D do you change the computer? Do you, do you manipulate that in any way? Um, the what image on the computer? The oh, image? yeah, definitely, without a doubt. I have to always color correct things. Sometimes I piece photos together. Um, oh, you do? Yeah, it's all, all kind of, whatever I can do, I do on the computer. Photo color filters or little shortcuts and things like that. And do you see any of your students who are really talented? Do you have a talented student? Oh yeah, students? without a doubt. I have lots of talented students, yeah. And, and they're all at the? At Art Center. Um, yeah, you get tons of talent there because it's a very tough school. You know, it's got a, quite a reputation. It's not easy to get into, so you, you get a lot of dedicated individuals. It's nice. I'm so glad you came today. Thank you very much, and I love that. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thanks for having and me. And thank you. We'll see you at Katie Cohn's. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> and we'll see you in a minute when Louise Davis comes back on the show. Joan Quinn and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm here with actress Louise Davis who was born and raised in Los Angeles. She went to Monroe High School in Northridge and she graduated from Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. Louise is an award-winning actress who has played in theaters across the country with directors like Sal Romeo, Barbara Bain, and Barry Primus. You're an Angelino. And you went into show business, but you went into theater instead of film, basically, right? Right. Why well, I was trained that? 
Carnegie Mellon University, which gave me a theater background. Which was, I didn't know they had a big theater school. Yes, they have a wonderful theater school, wonderful theater school, and it's even thriving to this day now. So I had such a good theater background, and the theater in Los Angeles is wonderful. It's very exciting because people do it for the love of theater. And it's small, but there's a lot of it. Right. That's right. what I love about right. the theater right. in Los Angeles. Nobody realizes it. No. But so you just decided that's what you were going to do, or do you do film? Well, I've done television, I've done film, but you wait and wait for those <laughs> jobs. <laughs> so I started getting more active in the theater community because I like to be in the process of being creative. So did you always want to be an actress? Since I was eight years old. Oh, you did. So yeah. that's why you picked a school. You picked Carnegie Mellon? Mm -hmm. I auditioned. My parents said, if you get in, we'll pay for it. And then they had to pay for it. Oh, because <laughs> you, you made it. Yeah, I made it in. But, but that was your main thrust, the main goal. Right. Did they do a lot of theater productions at the school? Yes, yes. We did a lot, and we toured. We did, did summer you? stock, touring. They have a lot of outreach. Pittsburgh is an amazing city. <laughs> I was just there. I love it. I loved it. I was there for three or four days with the opera. I went to Carnegie Mellon. I was on campus and I s listened to some of the lectures. And I went to the Borholm Museum and went to the theater. Went to. It's very busy culture. and it's great. Yeah, there's so much culture in Pittsburgh. So you did you know. perform in some of those theaters downtown? Yes. Oh, you did. Yes. I stayed in Pittsburgh through the summers, and um, then I and my I since I grew up in Los Angeles, a lot of my my college um, roommates and stuff went to New York. Well, I was going to say, did you ever did you go to New York after school? I never went to New York, and I still regret it a um, little because I think New York is is where you really get to experience. When you came back to LA, did you take more acting classes? Yes, I studied with Milton Casellas for oh, four years. Did you? He's a dy He was a dynamo. He was incredible. I know. We loved Milton. Right. <laughs> so what do you think was the big turnaround for you? Was there a big break um, in the theater? Well, actually, this play that I'm doing now, Tennessee in the Summer, about Tennessee Williams, has been a big, a, a big major um, part for me that, that has given me a lot of recognition, I think. And how long have you done it? Well, we've done three different productions, but the last time we did it was 10 years ago. That's what you said. When did he write? Tell us who wrote it. Joe Biesecker wrote it, and he lives in San Francisco, and he really knows that culture and that man. Tennessee Williams is a homosexual, was a homosexual, and, and he really writes about what it feels like to be in those shoes. He writes a beautiful relationship between the two men, it's it's very well um, understood, and he it, it, so he, I think he has a kindred spirit to Tennessee Williams. He writes like Tennessee Williams wrote. It, you almost think the play was written by Tennessee Williams. Did did he produce it in San Francisco first? I think he's done it in several places. He uh -huh. did it in Edinburgh. He did it in Seattle. He did it in San Francisco. Um, Great theater. All of those places, right. great theater uh, cities. Did you classically train after you were with Milton? Did you train classically? I trained classically at Carnegie Mellon. Oh, that's where it was because you played and you you performed in Hamlet and Tartuffe. Right. And is that a totally different kind of training? It's it's different. Um, I married a writer. And so I started to veer more into the new works because I um. wanted to see them flourish. And so, then, so that's what this uh, Joe is, Joe Bessiger. Yeah. Uh, new works, of right, course. Right, right. So you started just deciding to be on the stage in new works? Well, I, I worked with Joanna Miles. In, and Woman in Shorts. Right. And is, was that newly written, too? Well, what happened was we she, she was... Um, in charge of a group that my husband and I were in for 20 years called the Playwrights Group. Uh. And many of the writers, she asked if they would write short plays for us, and we got 11 short plays and narrowed it to six, and Joanna and I did all these 
all the plays. So they were all characters. short plays, yeah. Women in Shorts, because I thought the title was so great. Uh huh. And women it was in provocative, shorts. and right. yet it was like short pieces, right. right? Short original pieces. And did you do the two of you do all of them? We did all of them. We ran around <laughs> and changed our hats and changed our um, um, shirts and were a different character. You were in something else with her, weren't you? Um, chairwoman. Chairwoman, right? By by Sage Allen that we did and together. And that was a new writer. That was another new writer that we did together. And uh, she was the head of the playwrights group. She was the executive producer of the playwrights uh, group. So I knew her. I've known her for a long time. And was, is it easy to to work with her on stage? She's wonderful. Yeah, we had such a good time. I wish we could do it again. Well, I hear those things about you. So tell us about your roles in uh, Tennessee in the summer, right? Okay, Tennessee, Tennessee in, in the, the summer. Because it's hot. Because <laughs> it's hot. Okay. Um, so uh, um, the two main characters of the play are Tennessee Williams and his female side, which is this beautiful girl, um, Tamara Braun, who is so incredible in this play. I, I think everybody should see both her and Jack, how they work together. Jack. Heller. Okay. And um, the scenes that they have together are written just like Tennessee Williams plays, with the same kind of, she is all of Tennessee Williams' women. Um, and all the other characters in the play are played by me and, um, and uh, Robert Stanley. And so I play Rose Williams, his sister, who, it's, it's a very sad story. She started out kind of losing her mind, and at that time they didn't know what to do with her, so they lobotomized her. Oh, well, yes. And I play Rose before the lobotomy in the first act, and then after the lobotomy in the second act, and I play his mother, Edwina, who Tennessee really had a hard relationship to. She was very puritanical, and she did not understand his writing. It's hard to believe that somebody that successful could still have that kind have, of relationship. Right, and have those problems in the back, right? Right, right. And then I played the nurse that comes in. So any other female character in the play, I play. So it, you played this in Ventura at the Theater on the Main. Who was yes. the director there? Um, um, that was Elena DeSantos. And, oh, I, I know. She's great. She's great. And Laurel Grove with Barbara Bain. With Barbara Bain. And Sidewalk Studio. With Sal Romeo. Okay, so the different directors, uh huh. do they see the play in a different way? Well, they've used different devices because it's a memory play. So in Alina's one, she had a scrim where I was behind so that you had that sense of memory. Sal does it really in, in terms of the lighting and the stage staging. And um, he, he has the woman, which is really interesting, in the presence of the memory, mo much more than we ever had, so that it kind of ties it all together. Um, let's see. Barbara? Barbara. Barbara, Barbara was really interesting because she just made you use your imagination. Like she'd say, okay, just make that typewriter be the, um, the, the room with the horse. Or, you know, I mean, she made me use my imagination on everything. And what she was so great about was she could link she could link each passage together. Like if you, if you ever had trouble figuring out how you get to one place to the other, Barbara understood how to make everything co a continuous motion. And the continuous motion is that with the way you're speaking or the way you're moving or the way you're... Your thoughts. Your thoughts. Yeah. So your words come out so that in a different way. Right, because my characters are a little off. They're a little... <laughs> <laughs> and so from, from nowhere, um, Edwina would say, there's a horse in my room. Oh, so you're thinking, <laughs> right. So you had to figure out, how do you get there? Where does it come from? And you have to know, or else it just comes out of nowhere. So where do you get your southern accent? Because he was from the south, right? Right. Well, we did have a dialect coach. We've been working on it so much that that we all talk like that now. <laughs> have, you, have you had different leads? I mean, have, has Jack Heller always been in it with you? Jack Heller and Robert Stanley and I have done this 
together for the last, for, I mean, we, the, we <laughs> haven't done it for 10 years, but we've done, we've known each other for the last 15 to 20 years. And doing done this, this play. doing this play, but yes. you all do other things in between. Right, right, but it really is a very heartfelt play for all three of us. And, and Tamara. <laughs> and does it go, I mean, you don't just say your lines and go your way because you know each other so well. I mean, are you really like relating? And, and is that what the director does to keep you fresh? Right. And Jack lost his sister and her name was Rose. And I feel like Jack and I are family. So we have that undercurrent in our work, even without the director or with the director. What else do you do besides, <laughs> besides this char these characters? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I like to put things together. Right now I'm working on an evening of poetry by Phoebe Doran with seven different actresses all playing, d taking the poetry and making it their own and becoming different people. They all on stage at the same time? Mm -hmm. And who writes the poetry? Phoebe Doran. Oh, she writes all the she pieces. Wrote all, she, had, she came to me with a book like this and said, I've been writing this poetry for 40 years. <gasps> really? And nobody's ever heard it. Is that right? Yes, and it's beautiful. Where is she from? Phoebe was in New York, but she's been living here for the last 20 years. And then how did you choose what material to use? Well, Is that what you're doing? In that's what, book? yeah. So based on the different actors, we chose the material to, to blend and to make them come alive through the pe through the women. That's fantastic. So it's, so will it be like a reading? Yeah, we're going to do it as a staged reading. As a staged reading. June 4th at the Road Theater. Oh, great. And, and this, this is at the Sidewalk Studio where you Sidewalk are. Sidewalk Studio what is that? Theater. It's a great space. It's very intimate. You feel like you're totally right there in the play. Nobody is ever bored during this play. Because you're right with them. Yeah, you're right with is us. Is it in Burbank? It's in, it's in Toluca Lake, oh, right Toluca next Lake. to Priscilla's, the coffee shop, right across the street from the Falcon <laughs> Theater. Um, I know where it is. If you want tickets, you call 800-838-3006. Okay. It's brown paper tickets. And um, if you want to know about the Sidewalk Studio Theater, www.sidewalkstudiotheater.info. And that's great. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and keep emailing me, J-A-Q-U-I-N-N-1 -N at AOL.com. And you can ride 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles, 90017. Bye.